Hey, folks, after last year's smack talk going up on MCRD, I thought I'd be done talking about Craig's for a while, and then that case I did live at my conference came, and I thought I'd be done for a while. And then my friend and former resident, Ram Parekh, sent me a case that came with a video that was so amazing, I had to immediately put it up on the MCRD site. We're going to watch the video first. It takes about a minute and a half. And then I'll talk to Ram, and then we'll go through the video one more time. I hope you enjoy it. I saw the I saw the You know we have a great way of finding that. Is he on the pad? Is he on the pads? No, they took him off. I think I need to be shot. Yeah, she definitely shot. Wait, I gotta put the pad. Okay, let's put the memory in there. Can you put this on that side? On the. So you can take you can take the towels away. That's no longer as good. Just take the picture. Yeah, this is here. All right, put your finger in that. Put your finger in that room. Wait, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not gonna. I get some gauze. Okay, get the bougie. 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 Get the Leave your finger in, try to see if you can get it. With your finger in there. So that way you know it's going in the right place. Charlie. Get out. I don't know if, it's, if you were going to be able to fit. Where's the it? internal? I have it here. Yeah. I have it here. But you you don't need it right now. Okay. Right. okay. Before we can you get some lube. Do we have any lube? It's in the heart force center. Surgery lube. We got the surgery lube. It's in. Oh, you got it. Okay. And you can take the bougie out. Inflate. Inflate. Oh, yeah. I need a 10cc syringe, please. Yeah. Here's your inner camera. Thank you. I don't know the uh, vent settings. Uh, All right, take a second to recover from that video, and then let's hear about the case from the person who performed the cryotherotomy, Ram Parekh. I saw EMS bringing a patient, and I heard, overheard them talking about how they can't open this guy's mouth as they're bagging him. And immediately my dog ears went up, and I'm like, what is this about? Apparently, this gentleman was having a cup of coffee with friends, developed some chest pain, and then went into V-fib. Now, the backstory is this guy broke his jaw about two to three weeks prior and had it wired shut a week prior before he came in. And then this unlucky guy goes and has a cardiac arrest in the field and his friend's doing CPR on him. And EMS gets there, BLS gets there, they put the AED on him, shock him four times. ALS gets there, they find him to be in V-fib, shock him one more time, give him 300 milligrams of amio, get a pulse back, he goes into V-fib again, they give him a milligram of epi, do CPR, get him back, and that's how he came into the ED. Wow. So he has a pulse in the emergency department. What was his level of mental status? His eyes would open. He was not responding to voice. He was having some pur purposeful movements. And so you guys made the decision to intubate him? So we look in his mouth, and his jaw is wired shut. So, and he's having respirations. He's currently got a sinus rhythm. His blood pressure is stable. And now we're trying to make the decision on what's the best way of going about this. And it became apparent to any, everyone that uh, we had to perform a surgical crike on him. And there was really no two ways around it. There was a brief discussion about cutting the wires and seeing if you access him orally. But we, uh, we quickly you know, dispensed with that idea. Because he, he already was breathing. He was maintaining SATs. And so now you could do an elective cricothyrotomy. Exactly. All right. So you guys made the decision to cut the neck. What, what was going through your mind next? So this guy had a beautiful neck and 
you know, if ever to do a crack with irony, this was exactly the guy you'd want to do it on. Someone who's taking breaths, although agonal and labored, with great neck anatomy. So what we did was put the non-invasive mask on him to pre-oxygenate him while we set up for the crike. And I had started feeling around. I prepped the neck, neck with betadine, started feeling around, felt the membrane, and felt pretty good about my, my chances of getting this done. I guess because this was elective is why everyone seemed remarkably calm and uh, there was a, a clinician capable of filming a video, which you guys did get patient consent for. Yes, we did. I have to say, these are, there was four attendings in the room, and all of whom you know, and all of whom I know pretty well. And I think for that reason, the resuscitation went extraordinarily flawless. There were no complicating factors at all. Everyone is on the same page. No one gets alarmed, and things are just happening appropriately and efficiently. It was, it was, it was a unique situation. Now... ENT, this is daytime, so conceivably could have been in-house. Was any thought given to an elective trach? There wasn't. This guy had, had two runs of VTAC in the ED during this crike setup, and it just felt like any further delay would have, he might have lost pulses at any point. He had already lost pulses, I think a total of seven or eight times in the 30-minute period since he was picked up by EMS. So I think uh, we decided to just go ahead while he was semi-stable and not waste any more time to get ENT down. This was a Wednesday morning, so all of the residents were in conference, much to their chagrin. <laughs> what happened to the patient? So we successfully placed the crike. He stabilized. I believe he was on pressors for a short period of time, maybe low-dose levofed. He had an amyodion drip going on. They cast him. They found 100% distal left circ occlusion. And he was successfully stented, and he is alert, awake, following commands. I went and saw him this morning, and he shook my hand, and he smiled and said, thank you. So, well done, brother. <laughs> thank you very much. Now, I could have just left everything just as it is, and that would have been swell. Rom actually asked me to critique the procedure, which is essentially gilding the lily because the procedure was performed so competently and so well. But there are a, a few learning tips that I think you could take away. So with Rom's permission, we're just going to run through the video one more time and just discuss some of them. So first up, you'll notice that they uh, draped, betadined, and injected anesthesia in the patient. And that's because this was elective. If this was an emergency, cricotherotomy obviously dispense with the towels, uh, if you have a chance, splash the bed of dime, but don't, don't wait for someone to find it. And lidocaine's nice, but not for the emergency crack. But this was elective, so that's why you're seeing all that. So you're seeing palpation of the membrane now. Now, he's making the cut, but his non-dominant hand is just kind of holding the skin taut, uh, more ideally, what you'd have is the thumb and middle finger holding the thyroid. And this will really, in a patient with poor anatomy, the obese patient, lock in where your cuts are going. And you'll notice very properly, Ram's right hand is actually resting on the patient's chest. You see his hand is not shaking at all. He's totally stable. And it's really quite beautiful. The number of times he had to cut through the skin is also representative of an elective crike. He's taking his time. He's really getting through. In general, when it's an emergency, you would make just one uh, little more powerful slash understanding that the cartilage is going to protect you from going beyond really skin and soft tissue. All right, now you'll notice a whole bunch of things happen in quick succession there. Ram repalpated the membrane with his finger. Perfect. And then he made the plunge cut with this number 10 scalpel through the membrane. Now, what could have been 
a little easier for him is instead of immediately pulling the scalpel, he had actually pushed away from him to the full extent of the horizontal breadth of the membrane and then flipped the scalpel over inside the cut and pulled all the way towards him. Now, this is going to become apparent why this would have been helpful because Rom's going to repalpate again after the cut and try to get his finger in, and he can't get his finger in because the cut's not big enough. Now, he proceeds, which is great because the bougie fits in perfectly, as you'll see, but getting your finger in there, dilating and confirming is really the way to avoid false passage. Once your finger is plunged and it's touched the cricoid cartilage from inside the cut, you have no problem from this point on. The bougie is going to go on like butter. The, the tube or the trach will go in. And uh, that, that's really the ideal. I'd go further to say that everyone's petrified of not keeping something in the hole, like it's going to disappear or float somewhere. If you make that scalpel incision the full width of the membrane, you push all the way away from you with the 10 blade or my preference, the 11 blade, pull all the way back towards you, uh, you don't have to worry. It, that hole is 100% findable. You could take the scalpel out and put your finger in without having to worry about the hole disappearing. Now you'll notice the uh, spray of aerosolized blood that is the best feeling in the world. Ram is wearing eye protection. All right, he's got his finger in. He asked for gauze because he still wants to be able to see. He quickly realizes the gauze is not going to help. It just blocks the video. And it's not a seeing procedure. He feels to finish the procedure, which is fantastic. He rides the bougie in, and he gets hold up. And that's... The absolute confirmation that all is well. You saw how much bougie went in. It's well beyond the sternal notch, and therefore there's no doubt this is in the right place. Now, as he is putting the 6.0 Portex over the bougie, which fits just perfectly, someone in the background is asking for surgery lube. You never need surgery lube for a cricotherotomy. The blood is your surgery lube. Plenty of uh, moist stuff on the field to get that trach in there easily. They're confirming with quantitative end tidal CO2. They're moving the ventilator circuit from the non-invasive to the end tidal CO2. Cuff is inflated. Patient's doing great. So there you go. Simply amazing. I think this may be the best video of a real crike you will find out there on the web. Much thanks to Ram. I'm so glad you were willing to come on the podcast. Thank you to Ruben Strayer of EM Updates who filmed this cricotherotomy. And that's it for this M. Crit Wee. Bye-bye.